Hey, hey! No. That's my chair. That's it, guys. I, I'm sorry, I can't make the video anymore. G'day, ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to the F4J. This particular plane has been a fairly anticipated introduction to War Thunder, as it was seen as a potential to overthrow the MLD and the EJ Kai's reigns. Now, this hasn't really happened, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but first, I'd just like to talk about uh, a couple of things regarding the live streams. I've got myself a face cam, as you could probably tell. Uh, it's a very nice Sony Alpha 6000. It's a, it's a DSLR camera, and I've bought myself a nice key light, so I'd like to be using them on live streams. So if you guys would like to jump into my Twitch page while this video goes up, yes, that's right, I will be live as soon as this video goes up. Uh, and uh, we'll be streaming some uh, charity streams for Play for Peace. These guys are really, really good charity, and of course they've teamed up with uh, Esports Ready, who is sort of, uh, I, I kind of want to say it's my brainchild, because I did help to found it, but FFG basically runs the show now, so um, go and show those guys some love. We're going to be streaming for these guys, it's a good cause, uh, there's drops, there's, uh, of course, you get to hang out with me and uh, have a chat. So absolutely come hang out and uh, we'll send you off to get you some free shit. So enjoy. But uh, F4J is not everyone's cup of tea. So not everyone will be enjoying the F4J. And I'm kind of in that boat. I'm sort of half-half because the F4J is a bit of a side grade to the F4E. And the F4E is your, I guess it's your dogfighty phantom. The F4J is definitely more of your support phantom. I did see uh, Deffen's video on the F4J. Uh, it is definitely one of those phantoms that you have to sit on the outside and pick off your opponents and, of course, pick your battles. You also kind of need a support. So this thing is basically an F4 phantom on steroids, an F4C on steroids, rather. Um, so you're going to have your AIM-7s, you're going to have your AIM-9s, and of course, they are going to have a gun pod attached to them if you choose so. Now, I like to use the gun pods because guns can always come in handy. And of course, you can't flare a gun pod. So, you know, what are you going to do? If someone's slow, you are closing quite quick. It's too close for missiles, Maverick, and you're just going to go guns, guns, guns. Now, this plane does come with something that the F4C and the F4E don't. And that is a pulse doppler radar. So you are going to be having some pulse doppler moments as you go around. The pulse doppler radar is extremely handy because nowadays pretty much everyone is at sea level and of course with the AIM-7Fs you can use those long range snipes getting like 20 plus kilometer kills as in like you launch at 20 kilometers and it lands like nothing else. This is pretty impressive but uh, personally I don't see many matches playing out like that so I tend to use the AIM-7E2s even though in this footage, you'll see the AIM-7Fs. They do burn for quite a while, and they do have a fair amount of, uh, I'm going to call it warm-up time, or uh, sort of distancing time, where they take a little bit of extra distance from your plane. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. My guess would be because it's the same seeker head as the AIM-7E, but uh, a little bit chonkier. And you know what? That's fine, because the AIM-7E2 is the AIM-7E, but lighter. So it's not quite as long a range, and that gives you with some options. That gives you a few little uh, options that you can use, you can sort of take advantage of and sort of adapt the plane to your play style. So if you want to play close in, then you can play close in because you can take the M7E2s. But if you want to play sort of far out and uh, like at the distance, then you can pretty much just do whatever the hell you want with the AIM-7Fs and enjoy your day. Now, in this case here, I've gotten myself into a little bit of a pickle because I made a bit of a mistake and the F104J, uh, F104G has managed to sneak in on behind me and there's a MiG-23 closing in quite fast. Now, the MiG-23s will be your bane because you are a missile bus. It's America's turn to be the missile bus and have the, uh, I don't want to say useless jet because this thing is far from useless, but certainly it is less uh, impressive than some of the other jets that have graced the game, like the F4EJ. It, doesn't quite make the same splash. That being said, this plane is still quite capable. That being said, again, uh, have a look at the footage. I'm getting absolutely reamed, and uh, unfortunately, the MLD manages to secure the kill there. Now, in many cases, you will find that if your team dies, you will have literally zero options, and you'll just sort of go into a little hole and cry and uh, slowly die. But if you have at least one ally, 
that has your back, then you really, really have it made. And this plane is exceptional in a 2v2 plus. So that is a 2v2, 3v3, or 4v4. This plane really, really does just absolutely shine. And have a look at the AIM-7E2s. Look how much distance they can lead and look how much of a, of a course that they can change so rapidly. Uh, that's why I like the AIM-7E2s. And with the spotting system and with the radar and with everyone having uh, flares, chaff, and being able to you know spot your radar with the RWR, it makes it really difficult to uh, get those long range shots unless you're going after bombers or uh, going after someone who's not paying attention. Now, someone who is paying attention is this MiG-21 BIS here. And uh, the MiG-21 BIS outperforms the uh, F4J, it seems, at sea level. And of course, that would mean that it uh, outperforms it at uh, higher altitudes as well. Uh, someone let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct here, where the F4J is just a little fat. Uh, to me, it feels like an F4C with uh, a little bit of better mobility and of course better weapon systems and of course being a naval phantom now in this case here i'm going to drop my speed i think i've even deployed my air brakes just to try and shake this 21 bis and hopefully lure him into a false sense of security forcing him to overshoot and then hopefully going for the kill here trying to get my shots on you can just see how fat this thing is as the mig-21 bis gets into its zone where it is excelling now the mig-21 bis makes a crucial mistake here and does not keep turning allowing me to get in behind him and this is where it's all going to end for the 21 bis now he is absolutely jetting away from me like nothing else so i need to either missile him or wait for him to make a mistake or have a teammate come in and save me now i have noticed this mig 21 mf in the corner here and there's a third one or a second one coming out soon so i'm gonna radar him send an aim 7e2 on the way and dodge his r3r there or his r60 and then the other mf comes in right at the last second so just as he's going around i'm gonna go and strike this 21 as he's quite slow and he's done a fair few turns so i'm just gonna try hedge my bets and uh, see if i can get in on the side I'm keeping an eye on the other MiG-21 BIS and uh, well, the MF, and luckily for me, this MF does not close the distance and does not fire any missiles while I'm in the dogfight. So I got extremely lucky, but you, you can see how quickly this could have turned very, very hairy had the MiG-21 BIS been paying attention or the MF here. You can see he's he's absolutely starting to, uh, to really make some waves on me. So I need to figure out something pretty quick. So I'm gonna try the same tactic that I did on the BIS and uh, see if I can lure him into a false sense of security. My, my maneuvers here aren't quite sharp because I know that if I go into sharp maneuvers, the MiG-21 will go into sharp maneuvers. And as a result, that will uh, mean that the MiG-21 just ends up on top. So I don't want that. I want him to sort of lure into a false sense of security and then maybe I could get some guns. In this case, I'm just gonna have to try a missile. And of course he's got flares. So that's pretty much useless for me. And he's making a lot of ground on me. That being said, he does kind of make a little mistake here, but he's got so much speed, so much performance, that I really don't have anything that I can do. In fact, all I have left to do is try and engage targets that are in front of both of us. Because even with all afterburners, with the nose down, trying to do as few of those really aggressive and energy consuming maneuvers, I just can't keep up with the MiG-21. It's just too much of a hassle. And then I start to get uh, spiked there from the front. I think maybe it's the airfield AA. And then that little MiG-23 icon appears. So I know I know there's someone out there who's uh, looking at me very, very juicily. And so I notice that he's heading back to his airfield. I, I kind of have no choice here. I either go in and die or I turn around and have a MiG-23 on my ass. And when a MiG-23 gets on my ass, that's pretty much game over. And at the same time, if I get within that radar, that uh, radar lock of the of the AA, then I'm pretty much fucked as well. So I just spot the MiG-23 at the worst time, and there's another plane coming in right behind him there. So I don't know what to do. I, I actually have no options. I What I should have done is when I noticed that the MiG-21 was uh, running away, I should have run away with him because I have another teammate back at base. But in pursuing that MiG-21, I've basically thrown away all my advantages. And that advantage is having a second teammate around you. If you have more than one teammate around you, then you'll be you'll be good. But if you don't, if you're alone and there's someone else that's uh, 
maybe going to catch up to you or chasing you or whatever, you're going to really, really, really struggle. And that's exactly what's happening here. I haven't got much of an opportunity here. And I, I've said it in the chat. I messed up. This is pretty much the thing that is going to spell death for me. The MiG-23 is quite rapidly gaining and I don't have many options. So what should I do? Quite literally nothing. I could run back to my airfield, but uh, I'm not a little bitch, so I'm not really going to do that. I could head back to this F4E in the distance. He's the only teammate left, but he's got bombs and rockets, so it doesn't look like he's going to be going for fighters, and it looks like he's not going to be of a whole use to the team. Maybe I read that wrong, but uh, in this case here, with three kilometers closing, I just say, you know what, fuck it, and I'm going to pull a very sharp maneuver, and I think this was my uh, proper undoing here. You can see that the MLD bleeds a lot of speed in turns just like the mig-21 but then as soon as it bleeds speed it can open up those wings and then just absolutely ream the shit out of me and at this point here he can even out accelerate me he's faster than me he's pretty much out everything in me here which just leaves me to sort of sit in a hole and cry and die because what else am i going to do pretty much nothing you can see even though I'm gaining a little bit, that advantage is going to quickly disappear the moment that I have to start turning for missiles. And then there it is. He's managed to pick up that extra speed. And yeah, it's pretty much game over. I'm going to try one more aggressive maneuver. See if I can get out of the way of his first salvo. And it looks like it's so close. Do I have a chance here? Absolutely freaking not. Because have a look at the turn rate on the MLD. He's going to cut inside me. And... Even though I'm trying to keep that scissor so, so tight, the wings come out and it's game over. It's not going to happen. He's going to cut in on the inside there and there goes the tail. So that's it for that uh, particular endeavor. And uh, yeah, it's pretty sad because this plane is really, really strong when you have a teammate around. And uh, in this next match, we're going to kind of see exactly what happens when you do have teammates around you to back you up. So, you can see all of the teammates around me. Have a look at the minimap, there's absolutely no one. And that's because I'm starting out on the periphery. I'm going to start out, try and, you know, weave my way in, get the guys on the outside, and if I have any problems, I'll just sort of try and head back to my team. Um, instead of last match where I went away from my team because that was the only real option I had. Yeah, this plane is quite team dependent. And for me, that really sucks. I suppose... Most of these planes here are team dependent because if you think about it, if you are one against seven, you don't really have a chance. But at the same time, in this particular plane, you can't really affect the battlefield as much as uh, perhaps I would have liked. I am, I am a touch underwhelmed, but this plane is still really, really nice and it is still an excellent support plane. So if you guys are wanting to give this a try, try it in a squad. Try it with an F5 or try it with an F4E. Um, or even try it with uh, another another plane, like an F4EJ, or hell, uh, an F8 Crusader, something like that. Something that turns quite well, to give you a little bit of backup against things like enemy F5s, MLDs, MiG-21s. They're going to be your bane, they're going to be the things that you're going to really struggle against. Um, FGR2s, not so much. F4Es, uh, maybe not so much. And of course, F4EJs and F4EJ Kais, uh, maybe not so much. But anything that can outturn you like absolutely outturn you then you really are going to struggle so uh, take a teammate with you have a friend everybody needs a friend and uh, you'll manage to get yourself some lovely games when you do have said friend now if you don't have any friends you can always join the discord and there should be someone on the discord who would be happy to play with you and uh, give you some love some much needed love now speaking of much needed love this mig-21 gets some absolutely much needed love in the form of an aim-9g and this is the benefit of the aim-9g you can kind of stealth an enemy from about three or four kilometers out because you just have so much damn like range on those missiles i actually can't believe how much range they have um, compared to basically any other missile i think they do have the most range maybe the aim-9d is uh, up there and maybe the r13m is also up there every other ir missile in the game at the moment just doesn't seem to be able to match it maybe the m9l but you know we don't have that on planes that doesn't really count and helicopters can go and die in a hole anyway so we're going to be using this uh absolute mega knowledge that we have here to our best extent and we're going to be going after this mig 23 mld now the mld has mti which is a sort of form of primitive look down shoot down it's not i don't think it's quite look down shoot down but it certainly is quite tough to defeat and uh, if you're going to be a little sneaky sneaky you have to really get on top of mig 23s 
Not only that, but you also have to sort of get on the advantage and stay on the advantage. Now, in this case here, we've got a distracted MiG-23 and he's, uh, well, not really distracted anymore because he's flaring the hell out of you. And you can see how uh, Peyton the lock is, how I lose it. It's so easy to lose this lock on the MiG-23. I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but we've lost it anyway and we're about to lose him to the AA. So I'm going to get the hell out of there. I don't want to bar of the AA. And uh, he's just going to sort of hover around his AA for a little bit. Maybe land, maybe rearm. I'm actually not really sure if he does that in this match. But um, he is going to spend an awful amount of time around this AA. And that also reminds me of the uh, video that I made on AAA. So if you guys want to know what I think about this type of situation, then go and watch that video. It's uh, probably one of the most well-made videos that I've made in, a, uh, in an ever, really. That's a new phrase, and that is uh, proper English, so we're going to run with that. Now, this MiG-23 has decided that he wants to play a gamer move, and he's going to head straight towards me. So, aim 7E out, have a face full of aim 7, and no one cares that you died. Thank you for wasting my time. That was about five minutes of just pussyfooting around the AA, and not even getting anywhere near to a victory. And all for what? <laughs> he didn't even get a kill. So, ladies and gents, if you are struggling like that, go, go and jay out. And have a great day. I'll see you on Twitch. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.